In this video, I'll be going over how to set up some scenes, and what sources are available to use, in OBS Studio. Let's get started. So what's the difference between a scene, and a source? A source is an audio, video, graphic or text element, that you can add to your stream. All of these sources live inside a scene. Think of a scene as a video canvas. You can create multiple scenes, and either reuse some of the same sources and change the layout, or you can create entirely new sources. If you use OBS often enough, it's best to save all of the scenes and sources as a scene collection. This way you don't have to recreate these every time. First, make sure you've selected the correct profile for your project. Profiles contain customized OBS settings. If you haven't seen my videos on recording and streaming settings, I'll link them in the description. I'll select the streaming setting for this tutorial. Now, let's create the scene collection. Go to scene collection, then new. I'll title this, Live Stream Scenes. Click OK. By default, you'll have one scene. Let's add another. On the bottom right corner, click the plus button. I'll title this, Main Scene. Click OK. I'll also rename the first scene, to starting soon. Press Enter. Now let's add some sources. We'll start by adding a graphic and some text, to the starting soon scene. Click the plus button to add a source, and let's pick an image. You can also add existing images, if you've already imported another image. Click OK. Click Browse to select the image. If the image is larger than the canvas, you can right-click the image, go to Transform, and click Fit to Screen, or Ctrl F on your keyboard. You can also drag and drop the image, into the Sources panel. Next, let's add some text. Here, you have a few more options than you did when adding an image. You can start by selecting your font. We can leave this on Arial. Enter the text, here. I'll leave anti-aliasing enabled. You can set the text transform to uppercase, lowercase, start case or none. I'll make it all uppercase. Next, let's pick a color. I'll pick this orange. I can give this a black background. And change the opacity to 100%, to make it visible. There's some pretty basic text options available in here. You can align the text, make it vertical, add an outline and more. You also have the option of using a text file, by clicking read from file, then selecting the txt file. This can come in handy, if you want to edit the text remotely. Let me know in the comments if this is something you'd like to see a video on. And if you're finding any value in this video, give it a like. Now back to the video. I'll right-click the text source, go to Transform, and Fit to Screen. You can resize and reposition it however you like. Next let's add some music. Click Plus, and select Media Source. Select the file. I'll select the file that I can loop. I'll set the music to loop, and use hardware decoding when available. Everything else can be left alone. Click OK. I would also adjust the audio levels, since they're peaking a bit. If you want to avoid things moving around by accident, you can lock everything in place. You can also hide unwanted sources. And for that matter, you can delete them by clicking the little trash can. Clicking the gear button will open up the properties of the source that's selected. To change the position of the sources, use the up and down arrows. You can also do this by clicking and dragging the source to move them up or down. Selecting a source, will also show you the properties and filters for that source. Some sources have a few unique options. For example, selecting the media source will allow you to play, pause and stop the audio or video file. Selecting the text will give you options to select the font or color. If you selected the read from file option and are using a text file, then you can also change the text. Selecting an image will only allow you to browse for a new image. Next, let's add a couple of sources to the main scene. First, I'll add a camera. Click the plus button, and go to video capture device. I don't have a webcam on this computer, so I'll select the virtual camera. You can set the resolution to device default, or change it to custom and specify the resolution in FPS. Click OK. I'll also add a watermark to this. I'll select an image source, and locate my logo. Since this is a watermark, I can lower the transparency a bit. To do that, Click Filters. Click the plus button, and select Color Correction. Lower the opacity till it looks right. You can move the filters window, 
to preview what the transparency will look like. When you're satisfied, close the window. Now, let's say you want to create a third scene to do a screen share. And maybe you want some of the elements from the main scene to be transferred over. The easiest way to do that is to right click the main scene and click duplicate. Next, I'll click plus and add a display capture. You can leave the capture method as automatic and select the display. If you want to see the mouse cursor, enable capture cursor. Click OK. If what's on the display capture has audio, then you can add an audio output capture and select your speakers or the specific device you're getting audio from. The default speaker option will play any sound that comes out of your desktop. So remember to mute any unwanted desktop sounds and notifications. Alternatively, if you're using OBS 28, you can select application audio capture where you only get audio from a specific program. This is currently in beta, but seems to work just fine. I'll move the display capture all the way to the bottom, so it doesn't cover the logo and camera source. I'll leave the watermark alone. And I'll resize and reposition the camera to be on the bottom right. Now that we have our scenes set up, you can switch between them by simply clicking on a scene. You can set the default transition in the scene transition panel. Right now I can only set it to either cut or fade, but if you click the plus button here, you'll see all of the other options that are available to you. In the next video, I'll go over these transitions, so keep an eye out for that. For now, I'll leave the default as fade. You can set the transition's duration in milliseconds. The default is 300. There are more sources available to you that we didn't use in this video. Here's an overview of those sources. Application audio captures the audio from a specific program. Audio input capture is an external audio source or mic that's coming into your computer. Audio output capture is the audio that's playing out of your speakers or headphones. So your desktop audio browser can show any website. You can also use this as a video source if you use something like Video Ninja. That's a video for another day. Color source will fill the screen with the color of your choice. Display capture, as you saw earlier in the video, can capture an entire screen. It won't capture any audio, so remember to add another audio source if you need it. Game capture is great for capturing video games. You can import one image as a source or create a slideshow with multiple images. Media source can play one audio or video file, which can be set to loop if needed. You can add an entire scene as a source, though you can't do anything with it except resize. If you need to make adjustments to that scene, you'll need to do it within the original scene. Video capture device will allow you to add a camera, webcam or another video source through a video capture card. And lastly, window capture will capture one singular window. Keep in mind that if you, you click something in that window and it opens a second window, that second window won't be captured. These are all of the sources available to you natively on OBS Studio. You can find more through OBS plugins. I'll link some in the description. And I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.